Hey, bladey kids. Welcome, bloody welcome. It is another great pod off. A bit of a Geek Vape special today. We've got, uh, we got a bunch of Geek Vape pods, which, uh, which all, except one, take the same Q pod system. So uh, these turned up, and I wanted to get, I wanted to smash out all the last pods that I have to test uh, so that I can do a best ofs video for the year, because you can't know, I like to do the best ofs. And uh, we did a big pod off just recently. And um, these guys turned up a little late, so we've got to get through them. What I like about what Geek Vape have done here is it's a Q platform. So they've got five pods that all take the same pod, the same Q pod, which is good because we see it far too much in the industry, the fucking pods, where they fucking bring out bloody ten of them and like they all have different fucking coils or different pods. So they're not cross compatible, which annoys the shit out of me and I'm sure it annoys the shit out of some of you. So, uh, I like what Geekvay have done here, having the, the Q platform, uh, which is pretty cool. So, we're going to look at uh, these five pods as such, or well, sort of six, because we've, um, we've got the Wenex Q, the Sonder Q, the Digi Q, the AQ, which I just had a look, is actually the Aegis Q, which obviously we know Geekvay use the Aegis uh, a lot. Uh, and there's also a Wenex Q Mini. Uh, which is like a simplified version. Uh, and then we're gonna have a look at the Wenax S3, which is the only one that takes a different pod because it's like a completely different shape. Um, so that's the only one that doesn't take the Q pods. But we're gonna have a look at all of them. So performance wise, coil wise, we shouldn't have to fill up too many different pods because they're gonna be the same cross compatible pods. But we're gonna look at the different features, the, what they look like, what they feel like, the battery capacity, capacities. Some of them have got variable uh, wattage, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna have a look at all the features and um, oh, it's a bit of a one-stop shop for your Q pod platform from Geek Vape. Uh, before we can get into any of that, we've gotta do a few little things first. We've gotta say hello to a few folks in the chat uh, and we've gotta have a fucking beer, all right? So let's start with a few hellos. We've got the awesome Shane Beekman doing uh, admin duties once again in the chat. Thank you, Shano. Um, we have a Slater. How are you, sir? I think I might finally be saying your name right. We'll see. Uh, microwave Oven, how are you? Who else have we got in here? We've got Cicero is here, damn it, as usual. Uh, we have uh, 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 Sweppo. G'day, Swep. How you doing, mate? Uh, Adam Breestones. G'day, Adam. Um, hope you all had a fucking Merry Christmas, by the way. Big Merry Christmas. And obviously, Happy New Year, which is going to be happening tomorrow for us. 31st tomorrow. Uh, who else have we got in the chat? We've got Dr. Roots. Uh, we've got Warthog. Uh, Slater has chipped in with a very juicy donation there. Pigtails, please. And thank you. Also, show us your new tats good and proper. Yes, I did get a new tat, uh, or a couple of tats, on me fucking noggin. Oh, thank you very much for the donation, Slater. Uh, yes, we have, the new, we have the new head tattoo. There you go. There it is. All right, get a good squiz. Everyone wants to see. Been wanting to get me noggin tatted for quite a while, and I uh, had a voucher for my birthday back in July from my beautiful wife. Uh, and my artist is uh, rather in demand, so I've had to wait to get a get a spot with him. Um, but uh, that was done a uh, day before yesterday. And uh, yes, it does hurt. The right hand side, interesting enough, didn't. It was really quite easy. I've had like way worse sort of pain in tattoos um, on the right hand side. It wasn't too bad. I think it's because all my endorphins and your adrenaline kicks in really quickly because you're getting stabbed in the head and your body is like, we better add some fucking endorphins and try and relieve that pain. And it was quite, it was fine. Like honestly, sat there, no worries. Would, would do it again, 10 out of 10. The left hand side, obviously we had a bit of a short break in between and I think I'd used all me fucking, all me minerals, all me bloody endorphins were gone and the left hand side was fucked. Like it was horrific. It was not good. So, um, so yeah, if you're wondering, um, maybe don't go for both sides of your head in one sitting. Um, don't do what I did. Do, do one side, and then maybe come back another day for the second one. Because <laughs> fucking, the second half was shit house. Anyway, thank you for the donation there, uh, Slater. 
Who else have we got in the chat before we get into a beer? Motherfucking Cheech is here. How are you, Cheech? Uh, we got George, Georgia boy. Georgia boy is here. How you doing, Georgia boy? Good to see you, sir. Um, Hayes, how are you, mate? Uh, Blizzy Blake Yopper, how are you? Who else is in here? We've got... Uh, Gideon, how are you? Boston's here. Uh, in Criminal, how are you? David Thompson, g'day mate. Um, Moab, how are you? Hopefully I haven't missed anybody. Andy Social, St. Pauli Nebel, how are you? I think that's everyone. If I've missed anybody, apologies. If you are watching this on the replay, there should be some timestamps uh, in the description of this video and there will be some timestamps commented so that you can skip to your favorite bit if you want to know specifics. Um, but uh, that's it. Let's do it. Let's have a fucking beer. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink a beer. Alrighty, we have uh, an epic, an epic beer. Uh, it's from Epic Brewing. Crank up the juice, the juice, spelled J O O S E, the juice. Crank up the juice. Uh, it's a juice party, hazy juice party, hazy pale ale. A uh, bit of a sad story. Epic. They've been around for quite a while over in New Zealand, Kiwis, and um, they are about to or are in the process of closing down, which is just a bit sad because I really like their beers. They've been around, as I said, for quite a while. Tasty, tasty beers. And um, they're not doing them, not doing too good, apparently, financially. So yeah, they're, um, they're no more, which is, which is sad. I don't know if they're completely gone. I guess they're not completely gone just yet. Or maybe this beer's been out for a little while and I'm only just getting it now, but um, yeah, sad times to hear that uh, we won't have any more, <laughs> any more epic beers. I know we've got a few Kiwis in the chat. I think, Slade, are you a Kiwi? <coughs> <coughs> oh, just as well, I'm getting a beer going because I'm getting a bit of a tickle in my throat. See if we can crank, there we go, focus it up. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. It does tell us a little bit about the beer on the back here. Uh, here's the unfiltered truth. Call them hazy, juicy, or neepers, but unfiltered hoppy pale ales are here to stay. Brewers have thrilled beer fans with these opaque fruity brews for years. And here at Epic, even we are a little cloudy about how many we've dropped. We're pretty juiced up about our latest foray into the haze though. Thick with fruit notes, but notably refreshing. It's our loosest juice yet. There you go. 5.3 fucking percent, and uh, these guys are brewing out of uh, Auckland, over in uh, Kiwi land. All right. Fucking cheers, dickheads. Here's to another year. Happy New Year to you all. Ooh, that's nice. That's juicy, that's juicy. So your hazy pale ale is similar in a ways to your hazy, you know, IPAs, but without the full on hoppy flavors. You still got that juiciness, you still got that fruitiness there, but it's like way more chilled on the hops. So if you're a bit of a bitch when it comes to the fucking hops, maybe a hazy pale ale is more your kind of thing. Andy Social. Did you sleep on newspaper last night? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't, uh, for two reasons. Firstly, I've got black pillowcases, so that works out really well when you get a black head tattoo because you don't have to worry about it staining the fucking pillowcase. Um, so yeah, I used a black pillowcase. Uh, and number two, surprisingly, uh, didn't have a lot of seepage, as you might say. Uh, you're usually with your tattoos, you get a lot of plasma coming out over the first sort of 12 hours or so, kind of oozes out plasma, which, you know, brings some of the ink with it, and you get, you know, you get shit on your on your clothes, on your sheets, that kind of thing. Uh, with the head, I didn't get, I didn't really get that. It didn't have a lot of seepage of plasma. It's been, it's been pretty chilled. But yeah, a little different. 
That's right, Slater. Uh, head tattoos heal real or hella quick, as he says. My tattoo artist said the same thing. You got a lot of oils on your head. You know, your hair it gets oily if you don't wash it for a few days because your head excretes oils and things like that. Uh, and it actually helps the healing process a lot. So from what I've heard, your head heals pretty quickly. So um, yeah, that's one bonus to the serious pain that you get while you get it done. Could it be because it's in a low fat area? I would say so, Hayes. I definitely think it would be something to do with the less fat on your head. Uh, back to this beer though, fucking good stuff. Very fruity. I'm getting stone fruits like peaches, apricot kind of flavors. Fairly chilled on the hops. But there is a nice little kind of citrus hoppy uh, bite there. Just easy drinking that. That's fucking nice. All right. Pair it up with the liquid we shall. Uh, I'm gonna go with a bit of Wolf 359. Been vaping this quite a bit lately. Kind of rediscovered it. It's one of my old favorites. Outer World Wolf 359. It is a, uh, a juicy peach, green apple, and pineapple flavor. And it should go well, I think. We've got a bit of stone fruit. We've got a bit of citrus in there. Should work well with our stone fruit and citrus in the beer. Oh yeah, that's nice. Perfect. A bit of peach with that fucking peachy beer. Mm. The pineapple flavors from this liquid, perfect with that little hint of citrus from the hops. Just a tropical fucking experience. This lovely summer fucking pairing. Mm. Very tropical. Lots of stone fruits and yeah, peachy flavors mixing around. All right, dickheads. Let's put that over there. Let's get into this. We're gonna try and keep this nice and condensed, nice and compact, so that uh, anybody looking at a new Geek Vape Q pod can kind of come here and hopefully get the info they need. So, we might start with the Wenax Q. Now, I've had the Wenaxes in the past. I think this is the most recent Wenax that I've had. The, um, I'm not sure which one this is. What does it say on the bottom here? I think it's just, oh, it's, it's a Wenax. It does take a different pod to what we have now. But I like this Wenax. It was really quite a good vape. So this new Wenax Q, jump over here. This new Wenax Q takes as we talked about, the new Q-Pods. Uh, they've sent us a couple here, uh, a kind of grey and black one, which we might have a quick look at. And I, I like the look of this orangey one. Sort of fiery orange. So we've got a thousand ma, two mil. Sunset yellow is the colour. Now I've got to be careful because I opened this before and there is a cheeky QR code right underneath my thumb. But you're gonna get a little booklet. Little booklet, uh, a warning card, and a warranty card. All right, so we've got warning card, warranty card, user manual. Good to see first off the bat, we have two pods included. Now, oh. I should have checked my nails before we started this. Can't have scungy, dirty nails when we're doing fucking up and close time, can we? That doesn't look very professional. <laughs> uh, we got a spare pod, that's good. And we have a USB cable, I'm assuming, in here. Yep. All right, let's chuck that over there. Chuck that over there. So this is the sunset yellow or sunset orange. It's quite nice. And then this is what they're calling gradient dark, which I don't mind either. That's kind of classy, but we're going to go for something a little colorful. I'm going to use the sunset or whatever it was. Let's put this one away. I'll give that to someone. 
All right, fuck that off. We don't need a USB-C. We don't need the warranty card. We will have a look at the user manual. All right, so there it is. Classy looking bit of kit. Looks like an aluminium type sort of sheath shell going on here. We have a bit of adjustable airflow on the side. We've got a screen here. We're gonna peel off the screen protector. Oh, that's, oh, that's satisfying. Who doesn't like a good screen protector peel? We have some sort of a fire button or menu select button, I would say. USB-C is on the side here, down the bottom. Just a little silvery cap. Uh, and we have the pods. There's the inside. Magnetic snap to it. So the two pods that they include are a 0.6, 18 to 25 watts, I think that says. And we have a 1.2, 8 to 12 watts what they've included and uh, the snap to fill system super convenient the snap to fill system we've seen it on plenty of pods over the years and uh, I like it it's just easy it's just easy to fucking fill so I think you're sticking your nozzle in there I think there's a little rubber flap that you're gonna stick your nozzle in um, we might actually fill it up right now so that it can kind of prime while we are going through the rest of the features. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, we're gonna use a bit of Rebel Bogan plum job. Uh, now for reference, this is a 50-50 PG VG split. So if you're wondering what ratio I'm using, that's what we're gonna use today. We're gonna use the last of this bottle. Throw that in the bin and grab ourselves a fresh one. Easy to fill, I like that. Fill system, definitely. Gets a tick. Gets a tick from me. So yeah, 18 to 25 watts is the rating on this. We'll put that to one size. It's one size, one side. Uh, and let's just go through a few specs on this thing. So we've got a two mil capacity on the pod. Two mils, pretty standard. Thousand milliamp hours. So good battery size for the form factor. It's pretty compact. Got a thousand ma in there, which is nice. Um, and it obviously, as we said, comes a 0.6 and a 1.2. Five to 25 watt output. Uh, OLED display, LED indicator on the button, Type-C charging, uh, there's about filling. All right, so instructions. One, two, three, four, five clicks, turns it on. There we go, we've got a little screen. We have a wattage, is that a puff counter? I think it's a puff counter in the middle. Yep, P and a puff counter. And then we have a battery indicator via a, a little bar system underneath that. So we've kind of got everything that we want in a pod. One, two, three clicks. Yep, three clicks will activate the wattage selection. It's in one watt increments. And as we talked about, it goes up to 25 watts and then round robins to five. I'm going to skip this track because this is some kind of fucking not good drum, that's not drum and bass. That isn't, yeah, all right, there we go, that's better. <laughs> uh, all right, so what else do we need to know about this thing? Yeah, we know how to adjust the power. Locking the fire button, turning the device off. When the device is on, press the fire button five times to lock the firing button, prevent accidental firing. But the device can still do auto draw and power adjustment. Press the fire button five times in quick succession again to turn off the device. Okay, so right now the fire button's activated. If we go one, two, three, four, five, We've locked the fire button. 
it's locked. So you can have it in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it firing, but you can still pull it out, have a drag, and it won't, you know, and it'll work. Um, so that's cool. And then one, two, three, four, five again, turns it off. So it's off completely. Two, three, four, five, back on again. I like that. That's good, that's a good system. That's a good system there, Geek Babe. Being able to lock the fire button off, turn off the fire button, but still use the inhale activation. So let's just adjust the wattage. We've got a uh, 18 to 25 watt rating. So let's start this at 12, kind of low. And then we'll lock the fire button. One, two, three, four, five. Fire button's locked. All right, snap in our pod. Let's let's go over vape. I think we're good. Battery status is also indicated by the LED light on the front here. Red, blue, green. Red zero to thirty percent. Blue thirty one to sixty nine. Green seventy to one hundred percent. So that's cool. And you've also got battery indicators when you're charging. Reset the puff. Pull out the cartridge. Press and hold the button for three seconds to reset the puff counter. All right, so if you want to reset the puff counter, you take the pot out, you hold down the fire button for three seconds and it will reset it. That's pretty cool. That's simple. I like it. That's about all we need, dickheads. Let's go have a vape. Let's, let's have our first uh, vape for the day on the Q pod. Uh, as I said, we're gonna start this kind of low. Oh, it's autoed to 25 watts. All right, so I've now got the 0.6 ohm coil in here, and it's only letting me run wattage between 18 and 25 watts. So it's automatically detected the resistance and said, you should be having 18 to 25 watts. So we can't start it lower than 18. So let's just let's just do that. Um, that's been soaking for a little bit. Sometimes I like to give it a little bit of a primer puff where I block the air holes underneath the bottom of the pod and kind of inhale. And that just sort of like sucks liquid into the cotton. Yeah, the 1.2 ohm coil, eight to 12 watts. So if I put this in here, it's automatically adjusted it to 12 watts maximum power you can do on that. Put the, the six, uh, 0.6 in and oh I gave it too much of a primer puff. <laughs> Maybe didn't need to do that. So probably didn't need to do a primer puff because I've sucked juice in. But that's alright. Clear it out. Yeah, now we're good. All right, let's have a vape. Start at 18 watts. Right off the bat, the flavor is very good. I gotta say, that's, I mean, Geek Vape know how to do a fucking good coil. They've done them, done them in the past. Yeah, no coil break in time on this guy. That flavor is, that flavor is good. Now, 18 watts, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I don't think I needed to do a primer puff on the uh, on the coil here, there, Jeremy. I, I probably oversaturated it. Well, I did. I put, I flooded it. <laughs> flooded it, mate. That's really fucking nice, straight away. I know this liquid obviously very well. It's my own liquid, so I know what it should taste like. I'm getting the plum. I'm getting the nice tobacco flavors. 
and it's reasonably cloudy. Now I've got the airflow wide open. I can get a nice restricted direct lung hit off of that. Let's bump up the power. Let's go to maximum power. I really like how the fire button is locked that I can't fire it, but I can still adjust wattage if I click it three times. All right, 25 watts. Let's see what this thing can do. That's impressive. For a little pod, for a teeny weeny little pod, that's impressive. Cloudy, flavor is very good. We're gonna bump it back down to 18 watts and do more mouth to lungs. So let's adjust this airflow down to like one hole. It's got a series of holes that you can adjust. Still a little bit loose. Let's close it off completely, see what we get. MTL, mouth to lung people. Yeah, that's a nice restricted mouth to lung draw. So far, so good, dickheads. So far, so good. That is nice. That is up there with some of the best flavor I've had out of a pod. I gotta say, that is very good. That is very good. Very nice. All right, well, that's our first one done, I think. The uh, the Wenex Q. Let's look at its baby brother, the Mini. Because I think this is just a simplified version. The Wenex uh, Q Mini. So also, even for a mini, it still has a, oh, oh there we go. Still has a thousand ma. Um, two mil, same pod, everything. Can't show you that orange bit. Inside, you're still gonna get a USB cable. You're still gonna get two pods. Uh, we have the 1.2 again. And we have obviously the device if I can get it out, would, would be good if we could, yep, there we go. Uh, but no screen, no screen here, just an LED indicator, same airflow, and also, yep, 0.6 pod. So size-wise, we need to do a little comparison. There is also, a, there's a bunch of colors in all of these pods. They've sent me two of each. So there's also this, uh, what are they call them this? Gradient gold. Gradient gold, which has a bit of a pattern on it, and we have a bit of gold and turquoise, but there's a bunch of colors. We'll use the black. So, it is, I guess, a mini, because it's just fractionally smaller, but not by much. Not a huge difference in size there. Maybe a half centimeter or a centimeter. Not a, not a big difference. But I guess they're calling it the mini because it doesn't have as many features. No board on here. So you're gonna rely on the same battery indicator that this one has with the LED light, but no, no battery bar on the screen. So you're gonna have, you know, your zero to 30% is red on the LED, your, uh, 30 to 69% is going to be blue and then green for above 70%. The great thing about it is you can just chuck the 
pod straight in, same platform, no difference there. So this should, in theory, bait the same, except we don't have control over the power because there's no fire button. It's gonna give you, you know, essentially the, the power, I guess the maximum power this pod can put out, which would be 25 watts. And this guy here, the 1.2 is gonna give you that, uh, was it 12 watts maximum? So that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Price wise, well, this is a bit odd. I'm looking at a particular website and it has the Wenex Q for 18 bucks and then it has the Mini for 23, which doesn't make any sense. Why is the Mini more expensive? <laughs> Uh, I would say that's probably going to be different on other websites. <laughs> I can't tell you all websites thanks to YouTube policies, but um, you would expect the Mini to be cheaper. But for some reason, the website I'm looking at has it for five bucks more. <laughs> let's, ha let's give it a vape though. Uh, as I said, I'm expecting this to give us the 25 watt output that this coil can handle. Yeah. I mean, at maximum wattage, it vapes the same. Same airflow, same pod, no difference. Still great. So yeah, I think normally you would see the Wenex Q Mini for cheaper. But the one I'm looking at somehow is more expensive. So if you're looking at the particular website I'm looking at, um, just go for the, the one XQ, don't go for the mini because you got more features. <laughs> But if you are buying for your mum or your grandma and you want something that's very, very simple, it's literally just fill the pod and put it in. And they don't have to worry about adjusting wattage or you know locking and unlocking buttons, you know, worrying about whether they've got the fire button locked and then they sit on it and it fires. The Winex Q Mini has got none of that confusing stuff for the uh, for the oldies, you know. It vapes great. It vapes like the fucking, the full size. So we might move on. We might move on to another Q-Pod. We will try the 1.2 ohm though, to do a comparison. Versus the Caliburn, that's a good question there, uh, Beers. I mean, the Caliburns have always been great. This is easily as good, easily as good. It has that nice spongy draw that the Caliburns all have. Yeah, I'd take this over a Caliburn, no worries. And the thing that it does annoy me about the Caliburns is there's so many different Caliburns with different coils and different pods what they're doing the, here is kind of just, everything's the Q platform, which I do like. Versus the cross pod, Cicero. You guys know I love the cross pods. Very good. I mean, that coil's a bit old. Yeah, I mean, this is up there with the best pods. I'll just say that. Caliburns, cross pods, this is easily on par, easy. Easy is good a flavor. Airflow is almost identical. Yeah, you, you can't really split them. 
they're up there with the cross and the and the Caliban's. All right. Let's go to the Digi Q. The Digi Q again, same platform. We take the uh, the Q pods, but a different shape completely. We've got a different shape here. We have um, that kind of boxy square disc platform, which I always like. I've, I've been a fan of this shape compared to the sticks. Uh, again, we've got a thousand milliamp hours. Again, we have two mils because obviously it's the same pods. Uh, and it looks like you've got a little puff counter uh, wattage sort of thing here. So we'll see. Um, these have got some funky stuff on the front. So same again, you're gonna get a user manual. And you're gonna get the same warranty card and warning card. So no difference really with what you get in the packaging. Yeah, Darth Vader and Buffalo Bill artwork. That's what I saw. You do get a lanyard with this one and you do get a spare pod. USB-C not included. So instead of getting a USB-C cable, you get a lanyard, which is probably more useful because everyone's got a thousand USB-C cables. So this one here's got like a little kind of bit of Asian writing on it. A bit of like a digital techie looking thing. And this guy, as someone aptly pointed out, has, I'm sure, an unlicensed Darth Vader and Buffalo Bill. <laughs> there are a bunch of different patterns on these as well. Or designs, I guess you would call it. Is the lanyard a charging cable also? No, it is not. The lanyard is just a lanyard. Just a lanyard. Um, so, so I, know, I know Nick's gonna be a fan of this. He's a big Star Wars fan. He's got a Darth Vader on there, Buffalo Bill. I kinda like the purple though. I like purple and green. Purple and green's cool. We're gonna use purple and green. All right, pods that are included are, yep, 1.2 ohm pod and 0.6 ohm pod again. So same pods included. Consistency is always nice. We have a little, oh yeah, little screen protector there. Same airflow from the looks of things down the, the side here. We've got a silver back, which looks quite nice. As we said, a thousand milliamp hours. Lanyard loop is here. There's a little button on the side there and a USB-C. All right, now, what does the user manual tell us? All the same specs, thousand mark, two mil capacity. Uh, what else have we got here? Turn the device on, five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. All right, there we go. Got a little LED indicator here. The screen, not as bright as the other one, but we have, again, a wattage adjustment and a battery indicator. I don't know whether we have a puff counter though. One, two, three clicks. We can adjust the wattage this one does in half watt increments, which is a little different to one watt, what we had on the uh, Wenax. Uh, it's gonna go up to, I would suspect, 25. Yep, and then round robins down to five watts again. So half watt increments instead of one watt, and from what I can tell, no puff counter. 
so that's a little different. Uh, battery indicator, obviously we've got the LED bar there, uh, sorry, we've got the um, LCD OLED bar on the screen, but we are also going to have a battery indicator, same again. Zero to 30 is gonna be, sorry, zero to 10% is gonna be red. Zero to 30 is gonna be orange. 30 to 60 is gonna be blue. 60 to 100 is gonna be green. So there's an extra light in there. We've got orange for 11 to 30%. What we're gonna do, guys, is tie out the 1.2 ohm we've done the 0.6 so I think it's only fair that we try the 1.2 same fill system same pod dump it in there super easy super clean filling I am a fan. And we're not gonna do any primer puffs because we did that last time we flooded it. So, in it snaps. It has automatically adjusted the wattage to 10 watts. As we know, we've got a wattage adjustment. Now, do we have the ability to turn off the fire button? Yeah. Press the fire button five times in two seconds, a state of power on, and it will lock it. So, what is it? How many times? Five times. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's start that again. One, two, three, four, five. Locked. So now it's locked. But like the WENX, we can still auto draw, which is a good feature, I like that. It actually gives you a readout. When you put the pod in, it says 1.21 ohm. So it actually gives you a readout of the resistance when you attach the pod, which is kind of cool. Uh, is it a decal or is it molded in? I think it's actually molded in and painted. Cause I can't, there's no lip for me to get under here. And this, I don't know if you guys can f hear this. When I run my finger across it, that is, uh, that is engraved. So this is, if we're getting close here, this is engraved metal. And then they've put a paint in the engraving. So that's like much nicer quality than what you typically see on a pod. Normally this would just be a fucking sticker. But this has actually been engraved and then painted. So that's um, that's pretty cool. Just a little, a little touch of added quality on the finish. All right, well this should be ready to bake. We've we've put it in there. It sat around for a couple of minutes. Yeah, we're good. We are good. So it's at 10 watts. There's 1.2 ohm pod this time instead of the uh, 0.6. So size comparison, while we're just getting it going, up against the cross, it's basically the same size as the cross. No real difference there. It's marginally thicker, but not by much. It's a little bit thicker, but really these are about the same size. Weight-wise, very, very little between them. Very little. Maybe a couple of grams more on this guy. So that's 10 watts, one, two, three clicks. We can 
go as high as 12, 13, 13 watts. So it, it does say to 12 watts on this coil, but it will let me go as high as 13, a little bit more. So let's, let's try 13. Definitely, you can feel that it's a, a lot less power coming out from this guy than the, um, the 25 watts on the 0.6, but the flavor is still damn good. What I will say is I think at 1.2 ohms compared to other 1.2 ohm coils, for instance, the cross pods, I do love the cross platform, but the 1.2 ohm coils on the cross platform, not as good as this, this is better. Yeah, for a 1.2 ohm coil, which is quite high in resistance, low on the power, the flavor is fucking good. What pod is in the cross? This is the 0.7 ohm pod in the cross, which has a different fill system and a little bit more capacity. That's why it looks different to the typical cross pods. There you go. Um, number E369. Um, if you are a, a mouth to lung pod user and you like the, the one ohm or above coils, this has got to be one of the best. As I said, flavor is better than a lot of 1.2 ohm coils. I'm gonna close off that airflow to mouth to lung. Mm. Flavor is even better. That's fucking great. Let's try the 0.6 ohm coil in the, uh, what's it called? The... DigiQ. Now this is technically branded on the pod as Digi Flavor, but on the box, it says Geek Vape. We all know Geek Vape and Digi Flavor are one and the same. They're the same company or owned by the same mob. So the box does say Geek Vape, but on here, up the top there, you can see it says Digi Flavor. So it's like a bit of a blending of the brands here, Digi Flavor, and uh, it says on the back there, Digi Flavor. <laughs> but they put it in a Geek Vape box. That's fucking nice. 25 watts we're at. It's automatically adjusted to 25 watts, putting in the 0.6 ohm coil. Same flavor as we were getting off of the Wenax. Again, same pods, cross compatible. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, back to the 1.2. Now it hasn't, oh, now it has. It didn't initially recognize the lower resistance and adjust the wattage, but I put it back in and now it's dropped it back to 10 watts. Yes, Ben, I did get my noggin blasted. We already covered that, so we're not gonna to spend too much time again on my fucking head tattoo. But I knew that it was gonna be a big talking point in this video. <laughs> All right, that is the uh, the DigiQ from Geek Vape slash Digi Flavor. I think we can move on to our next one. Continuing with the QPod platform, we have the AQ, also known as the Aegis Q. Um, 1000 Ma again, two mil capacity, because again, we're using these Q pods. We've got a red one, we've got a blue one. I'm gonna use the red, but we'll have a look at the blue. Very nice, vibrant red color on this. So we got the, the device plus one pod, pre-installed. We have a 1.2 ohm pod again. 
And we have, oh, a spare mouthpiece. That's interesting. And a USB-C cable. Plus the same usual user manual, warning card, and warranty card that we've seen already. Let's quickly show you the blue one. They do have some more chilled out colors like black and silver if you're not into the colors, but the blue is nice. Gotta say, that does look quite good. Get an aluminium kind of finish with a bit of a uh, Aegis band around it because we know that the, uh, the Aegis designs have always had these little kind of material or leather uh, side bits. So again, kind of continuing with the Aegis theme, they've got this little, what I can only assume is like vinyl, like a little vinyl wrap bit here. We've got a fire button. We have airflow adjustment, which looks a little bit different, but same sort of principle. USB-C is around the base here, and the pods, well, they're the same. We have a uh, fill system exactly the same. We do have a spare cap, which I can't tell any difference. So it looks like they've just given you a spare cap. Yeah, there's no difference in these two. So that's kind of cool if you're a biter, if you like to chew your mouthpieces, um, then, uh, then you get a spare one, which I guess is a bonus. Uh, all right, let's have a look at, I don't know whether this thing has any power adjustment, let's see. So as we know, we have a two mil capacity, we have a thousand milliamp hour button, a battery. Oh, it does say 0.8. So we have a different resistance on the pod here. We've got a 0.8 ohm, which is new. So we've got 0.8, which is 12 to 18 watts. Our previous Q pods have been 0.6 and 1.2 ohms. You still get a 1.2, but now you're getting a different 0.8 ohm pod, which we're definitely gonna try out. Um, Fire button five times in quick succession to turn it on. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the LED? Ah, it's on the side here. So we've got a little LED on the side there for your indications. Battery indicator is red 30, zero to 30%, 30 blue 30 to 69, and green 70 to 100. Power output, we do have some adjustments. So hit the fire button three times in quick succession to cycle through three different outputs. The red is going to be 3.1 volts, the blue is 3.4, and the green 3.7. All right. I don't think we can turn off this button here. But we can adjust the power, so one, two, three clicks. Green, three clicks again. Red, three clicks again. Blue. So there are three different power outputs. As we said, the lowest power output, 3.1 volts, is going to be red, 3.4 for blue, and 3.7 for green. We'll set it to red, we'll start at the lower power setting. All right. And then one, two, three, four, five clicks, turns it off. One, two, three, four, five, turns it on. And then as you fire it, it's gonna give you um, your battery output. Well, let's go ahead and fill up the point, the point 0.8 ohm, the new pod, or new to our testing. Here we go. Again, really easy to fill. Click, clack, and we are ready to go. Size comparison up against the Wenax. It is a little bit slenderer, I think. Um, they are 
almost the same length. The Wenex is like three mils, four mils longer. This somehow feels a bit smaller though. Uh, though they're not. They're like the same width. I don't know why, but this seems to feel smaller. Anyway. So this is a kind of in between your Wenex Q and your Wenex Q Mini because it's got power output adjustment, but it doesn't have an LED screen to tell you stuff. So it's got a little bit more in terms of features than the, the, the Q Mini um, Wenex, but it doesn't have um, the screen and the you know the battery life indicator and all the rest of it. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. It's a little in betweener. Hopefully that's been long enough for it to prime. We can give this 0.8 ohm coil a go. They always say to like give five minutes from when you fill the pods to when you vape them. I usually do the primer puff and kind of suck in while holding the airflow closed. But we did that before and we flooded it. We don't want to do that. We also don't want to wait. Turn it on is a good idea. All right, just making sure we're in the lowest power setting. Lowest power setting, widest airflow, 0.8 ohms. Airflow in its widest mode. <laughs> Feels about the same as the widest airflow on the Wenex. So I don't think there's really any difference in terms of the overall airflow that you can get. That's pretty impressive for a uh, lowest power setting. Again, flavor is not a problem in terms of break-in time. It's just immediately good flavor. Let's go up a power level. One, two, three. We're on to blue. So this is our medium or 3.4 volts. You do notice a little bit of a bump there, that's that's definitely notable. A bit more flavour as well. 60 watt guy, this is the AQ pod, or Aegis Q is the full name I believe it has. AQ, all of these pods that we've done so far, if you're just joining us, they are all Q platform. One thing that I've always fucking hated about pod systems is they bring out constantly new ones and there's always a new fucking pod and you, they're not cross compatible, which fucking is just dumb. This is great. Five pods we're looking at today and they're all Q platform. Now 0.8 is usually the resistance that I go for on a pod. 0.6 is a, it's just fine, I like it, but it's a little bit lower than what I like. I usually go for the 0.8 and this is kind of right on the money. Let's go maximum power, green. So this is our 3.7 volts. That's good, that's very good. Compared to our 
0.6 ohm at 25 watts. Let's bump that up. Let's see what the difference is. Do notice you can feel there's more vapor coming into your lungs. So if you like a thicker, more cloudy vape, then the 0.6 is definitely gonna give that to you. There is a noticeable difference between 0.6 and the 0.8, both on maximum power. Now, if we put the, the 0.8 into the Wenax, which we can then adjust the wattage to, yep, it's automatically adjusted to 18 watts, maximum power. Do we get more? at 18 watts versus 3.7 volts. Let's see. Not, not really, 3.7 volts on the 0.8 versus 18 watts. It's pretty, they've, they've kind of dialed this in pretty well, I think. Pretty dialed in. One thing I have noticed is it doesn't always automatically detect the resistance of the coil and adjust the wattage. Most of the time, it does. Switching pods. Goes from 25 down to 18. But sometimes, it did it again, but every now and again it, it didn't recognize the change in resistance. So that's a little bit of a drawback. It's not 100% on the auto detecting, but it's pretty good, most of the time it does. There you go, Aegis. I like this 0.8, this is definitely my kind of resistance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can move on to our last Q pod. We have one more after this that's a not a Q pod, um, but uh, this is the last that takes the Q platform. This is the Sonder Q. Sonder Q, uh, again, we have the two mil capacity because it's uh, a, um, a Q pod. Uh, and again, we have a thousand ma, so this is great. You don't really have to choose any of these pods based on battery because they're all a thousand ma, which is, which is nice. Consistency, once again, Geek Vape. This seems to be a very stripped down um, product in that you just get the device in a neat little baggie, uh, no spare pod. There is also a grey one. There's a bunch of colours, but they've sent me grey and they've sent me the the blue, sky blue. So we're going to use the sky blue. All right, open it up. As I said, strip down. You've got just the device and one pod. You have a instruction for filling it. So that's kind of good. This is like a, a really good entry level thing you give to a smoker. It has a nice little picture card there so they know how to fill it without having to go through a big manual. And then you've got a, a little, I guess it's the user manual thing here. Yeah. What does it tell us? This is in Espanol. Where's the English? Italian. Oh, there's English. Um, yeah, does it tell us anything? Little card there tells you that they're compatible with all the different pods we've been looking at. Doesn't tell us anything about battery indicator. Because I'm assuming that there is no battery indicator on this. Nope. So you've got airflow adjustment, again, same as we've seen. We do have a little, oh yeah. 
Gotta have that. Gotta have that. Battery indicator and U. Uh, sorry, battery indicator. Airflow adjustment and USB-C. No, no LED from what I can see here. So this is super stripped down. It dies when it dies, sort of thing. Uh, and you get a 0.8 ohm pod again with this guy. So 0.8, 12 to 18 watts. And this is plastic. So a plastic body this time. These are gonna be super cheap, I would assume. Which is kind of good. I like a really cheap entry level product. 10 bucks, 10 bucks tickets is what I'm seeing. US, $10 US for the Sonder Q. It says 20 watt pod kit. So this is gonna give you like a maximum of 20 watts output. That is gonna be dependent on the coil that you get. Um, I don't mind a bit of plastic there, uh, 60 watt guy, because it's a cheapie. You know, these are a little bit, these are all sort of around the $20 mark. The ones that we've been looking at. Oh, throwing them around. Looking at all of our pods here, these are all around the $20 mark. Uh, they're metal, they've got power adjustments, uh, battery indicators, you know, screens and that sort of thing. This little guy here, cheap and cheerful, get the disposable user off of the disposables with something that looks like a disposable. It's made of plastic. It's definitely a better quality than a disposable though. It's quite nice, the plastic, I gotta say. Um, I got no issue with this. 1000 Ma, 0.8 ohm. You don't have the extra coil, but again, it's $10. It's 10 buckaroos. I don't mind it when they do stuff like this. If you want the more premium, you know, extra pod, batteries, indicators, adjustments, all that kind of stuff, there's, you know, something for you at 17, 20 bucks. But for a cheap and cheerful $10 edus, I don't mind that. So let's put the 0.8 ohm pod that we just started using in the Aegis, because that's what you get with this Sonder. 0.8 ohm in. Oh, there is an LED indicator. You do get LEDs. It's very cleverly hidden in the Sonder. So when I put the pod in, you can see the little LED there? You see that? Little flash. Very sneaky. I'm going to assume if it has an LED, even though it doesn't tell me anywhere in the map, oh, maybe it does and I haven't seen it. It doesn't say it. But I would assume that you're gonna have the same green for above 70%, blue for 30 to 70, and then red for when you're below 70%. That, I would assume that. Because you've got an LED in there, you might as well have a battery indicator. Right. It's great. Now, even though this one only does 20 watts as the maximum output, with the 0.8 ohm coil, you don't need any more than 20 watts because it's rated to 18. So you're gonna get 18 watts with the 0.8. Oh, I if we put the 0.6 in here, we won't get the full 25 watts. So you will get a little bit less performance on the 0.6 ohm coil than you would on the Wenax or something like that that does 25. But still great. Yeah, it's just a little bit less than the 25, but 20 watts, point, point 0.6 ohm, is still getting plenty of power. Mate, for 10 bucks, that's gotta be, I mean, what pod that has the same features as this? cost ten dollars. That's fucking good bang for buck. So 
So yeah, you're looking at, let's go through a few prices on these. Cheap and cheerful at 10 bucks, the Sonda Q. Very, very affordable. Uh, the Wenex Q, $18 I can see it for. This is all US prices. Wenex Q, 18 bucks. Somehow the Mini is 23, but I'm sure that that's just a website thing on this place. And uh, the Aegis, you are looking at um, 19.99, 20 bucks. You're gonna see some price variations from website to website. Uh, the AQ, oh, not, not the AQ, the, uh, what is this one again? The fucking, the DigiQ. Let's see, what's that going for? DigiQ. This guy's going for a little bit more. Oh no, I can find it for 20 bucks. Depending on where you get it from. 20 bucks on that DigiQ. That's good value as well. It's got the little LED indicator on there. You're not gonna be paying more than about $25 for any of these. Pretty damn reasonable, I reckon. Uh, we had a donation come in from Beers. New Year's Eve beers, says beers. Thank you very much for that donation, mate. Appreciate that. Very much appreciated. I will spend that on New Year's Eve beers, Mr. Beers. <laughs> so, um, look. Well, normally I would do a rating system. These all take the same pods and switching between, they all vape the same because they all have you know adjustable power except for the Sonda uh, and they all put out the same great flavor the only difference you'll get is the Sonda or the 0.6 ohm coil won't give you quite as much power output as the others because it's only a 20 watt maximum but it's 10 bucks it's definitely probably the best value pod that I've seen uh, on the market because the flavor is fucking banging and it's ten dollars and if you're gonna get someone off the durries that's got to be a good start. My personal favourite, and this has to be purely just based on form factor really, and maybe the fact that it has a, a digital dis display, um, would be either the AQ, or not the AQ, what's this one? The uh, the DigiQ, the DigiQ, or I, quite, I really quite like this, um, the Wenex Q, because it's got the screen, it's got the adjustable, you know, power outputs. But they're all going to be great choices. Um, you know, the, the the Aegis Q doesn't have the onboard display, so that's probably going to go in, you know, just above the Sonder. Um, with the Wenex Q Mini kind of in the same... Well, actually, no, the Wenex Q Mini's got to go next to the Sonder because it doesn't have variable power output. So these two are very stripped down, very simple. Uh, Aegis Q coming in there, and then the uh, the Wenex Q coming in there, and then, uh, but that's, I gotta flip them around, don't I? Because you're on the other side, <laughs> so. So my personal rating would, would go like this. You know, I really like the form factor on these guys. I like the fact that it's metal and it's been engraved and painted. Um, but this and the Wenax kind of on par in terms of what I like, because they've got the screens. Uh, and then going down the line um, with these guys. Does that make sense? That's how I'd rate it. Uh, if you're looking for a new pod, these are definitely great choices, any of them. Because the flavor is, as I said, it's up there with 
you know, the greatest pods of all time kind of thing would be the Q pla uh, the the cr the cross platform from Vapor Esso and the the Caliburn platform um, from uh, from UL. And these guys all have as good flavor, maybe even better. It, de it depends. You know, I'm not comparing the same juices at the same time. But yeah, you're not going to get a pod with much better flavor than this guy. Very nice. Super juicy. None of these have got any kind of juicy condensation going on on the pod, which is a big plus because I hate juicy pods. There's no seepage or build up of um, condensation. Coil life, I'll have to get back to you on that one. I'll keep using these for sure. Um, and uh, maybe they make it into the best ofs for the year on the pods. But, yeah, flavor, the, the draw on these pods is really nice. It has that same sponginess, that sort of elastic band kind of feel that the good pods from, um, from UL and from Vapor Esso have. Geek Vape know how to make a good fucking coil. You get good, sort of restricted direct lung hit with the airflow wide open. You get a good, uh, you get a good mouth to lung with uh, with the airflow closed. Only real con that I could say, and not really a con, is occasionally it doesn't automatically adjust on the uh, the power output one. So like your your Digi Q, your Wenx Q, um, they have those automatic you know adjustments on the power. Occasionally, it doesn't automatically adjust the the power output when I when I put the pod in, but most of the time it does. I can't really find anything else at fault with these. They're fucking good. And the biggest thing for me, and the reason I did this video, is they're all Q pods. They're all fucking Q pods. So they all take the same platform. There's no difference between them uh, in the coils. You can buy one device, you can buy another device, and you can use all the same pods across the platform. That's a fucking huge winner when it comes to pods. Too many pods with different fucking coils. All right, to finish things off, we will do a non-Q platform pod, uh, also from Geek Vape. So these will require a different pod. Uh, it is the um, Wenex S3. So it has the same name as the other Wenax, but it's the S3 because it takes the S pods. Uh, there's a black one, which we probably don't really need to have a look at because it's gonna look like the gray one, but it's gonna be black. We'll have a look at the silver one. And these have like a cigar kind of shape to them. It's a circle. And is that a 510 drip tip? Kind of, kind of a 510 drip tip. It's a very long connection point. Um, we have in the box another drip tip. Okay, another drip tip. Oh, I see what's going on here. We have a spare pod and we have some filter-like drip tips, which I believe they did previously on a Wenax. Uh, you get a little Wenax pen style pod family. Oh, there's a website on there. We better just hide that. So the Wenex S3, the Wenex M1, and the Wenex, well that's the combo kit, and then there's the Wenex M1 non-combo kit. So this guy has an 1100 ma battery, two mil capacity again, uh, and intelligent beaming LEDs. Okay. Intelligent beaming LEDs. Now you get two of these drip tips, one for each pod. It's not quite a 510. You might be able to put a 510 in here. Let's see. Have we got a 510? No, you can't. It's not a 510. Kind of looks like one, but they are built to take 
these little filter drip tips, which we've seen quite a few companies do in the past. It's meant to kind of feel like a cigarette in your mouth. Oh, meant to go that way in. Meant to feel like a cigarette. It kind of takes a little bit of the flavor away from what I've experienced, but it does feel like a cigarette and for smokers making the switch, that's not a bad thing. You've got adjustable airflow on the side here. That's cool. USB-C on this side. No fire button. Oh, there's, no, there's a button down here. There's a little button. That's a button. Oh, we turned it on and we've got a little LED indicator there. That's cool. Those got to get soggy as fuck. Yeah, these do get a little bit juicy, but they're actually not as bad as you would think on the juice side of things. Let's have a look in this user manual, see what else it tells us. Actually, while we're, we're doing that, let's fill up the pod. So you get, what do you get? A 0.8 ohm. 0.8 ohm is rated at 14 to 18 watts. 0.8, and then this guy is a 1.2. So you're getting a 1.2 and a 0.8 ohm. This one's rated at 9 to 13 watts. So we might try the, uh, the 0.8. Filling it little rubber grommet here, not quite as convenient as the Q pods for filling, but that's okay. Oh, I've got a bit of juice. Let's try and keep this as clean as possible. That wasn't too bad. Did make a little bit of a mess. All right, so that's filling. Well, that's priming. That's getting saturated. Turning the device on and off. Press the firing button five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Turns it on, I think, or off. That's off. Turn it on again. When the button is turning the device off, okay. Press the firing button five times in quick succession to turn the device on. The interactive LEDs will respond to your operation. Turning the device off. Press when the button lock is on. How do we turn the button lock? Locking the fire button. When the device is on, press the fire button five times in quick succession to lock the fire button, but the device still will do the auto draw thing. So they're doing the same thing they've done before where you can um, turn off this button um, and still use the auto draw. It does have a power output. Three, three clicks. One, two, three. Oh, I turned it off. One, two, three, four, five. Turn it on. Okay. Now it's on. We can one, two, three. We have uh, blue. Green. And red. So when you're using the 0.8 ohm coil, you've got 14, 16, and 18 watt options. When you're using the 1.2, you've got 9, 11, and 13. And I would, again, assume that the red is gonna be the lower power setting, the 14 watts, your blue is gonna be 16 watts, and your green is gonna be 18 watts. So kind of similar to what we've seen on the previous setups. LED indicator for your battery life is gonna be white, 0 to 30 percent, blue 31 to 69, and green 70 to 100. Let's start at the lower power setting in red. And then we just snaps in, magnets in there. Let's start with the regular drip tip and then we'll try the filter drip tip afterwards. Now I've kind of liked the shape of these uh, Wenxs with the tube-like setup. It's 
kind of nice, it's kind of cigarish, and I do still enjoy a cigar every now and again. Let's give this a go. Magnet is uh, quite strong on this one. Takes a little bit to get it in and out. See if I can prime it a little bit. Here we go. The Wenax. Wenex S3. So there you go, your little LED indicator there. Now, I think we can fire it, kind of like a mech mod, with the bottom here. Yeah. But if we give it one, two, three, four, five clicks, we've locked that fire button. Yeah. It's no longer firing, but we can still mm, inhale activated. So you can lock it and put it in your pocket and still pick it up and have a fucking toot. Mm. That's great. Now it feels a bit more airy than the Q-Pods. Let's go airy, wider setting. <coughs> <coughs> Only one cough this video, that's pretty good. Oh, maybe I'm imagining it. No, it's about the same amount of airflow. About the same amount of airflow. Fairly restricted direct lung, and uh, then if you close it down, can we get mouth to lung? Mm. Wow, so with the airflow really closed down on this uh, Wanax S3, you get a tighter draw than you get on the other Q-Pod systems. So that's interesting. If you like a really tight mouth to lung, then this is gonna give you more of a, a tight mouth to lung. Mm. That's very restricted. Let's try some of these other power settings. Uh, one, two, three. All right, we're up to the blue power setting now, which is uh, gonna be, on this pod, the point eight is gonna be 16 watts. That's nice. Flavor is up, clouds are up. Let's go maximum. Green. Now, I do like the drip tip on this guy because it's more like a traditional, you know, vase shaped drip tip. These are fine, the little duck bill kind of thing. Feels like a lot of other pod systems, no complaints there, but I do prefer this nice little cigarette kind of shaped vase drip tip. That's good flavor. That's damn good. It's easily on par with the uh, the Q pods. Would I buy one, Andy? Yeah. I mean, if I was looking for a pod that kind of reminded me of a cigar, then this is this is nice. Let's try it with a cigarette drip tip. You do lose a bit of flavor. The fibers, I think, in these cigarette type drip tips just kind of kill flavor a little bit, but it definitely feels like a smoke. Like a big fat smoke. <laughs> All right, I gotta slow down, I'm getting nicked out. That's nice. A different platform, it's something different to the cues that we've been looking at, but it does have some features which are kind of cool. The alternative drip tips, um, and the shape is a bit more unique, which some might like. So, I'm gonna give that a thumbs up as well. Nice little job there. Good, flavor is exactly the same, I think. 
uh, as the 0.8Q pods. So, dickheads, I'm going to leave it there because we've been going for an hour and a half and I wanted to keep this short, but somehow we haven't kept it that short. Hopefully that answers all your questions on the Q pods from uh, Geek Vape. Uh, all great, great, great platform. Great pods. Would, would, 10 out of 10 would do again. Um, and uh, and this little, little Wenax thing, very nice. I've got to bugger off though, dickheads. Uh, my wife has got a wedding to facilitate and so I'm going to piss off. But thank you all so much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the new year, all right? Sub home your fucking dicks off and your bloody tits off. Be good to each other. Be safe this New Year's and uh, we'll see you in 2024. All right, cunts? Let's do a big, big vape. Three pods in one.